New project, yes. Done. Record, record, record. Start. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is take three. Take three. And the reason it's take three is for multiple reasons. There we go. Take three. Fear the bull. <laughs> uh, multiple reasons. One of them was Wi-Fi problems. The other one was wind problems. And the third one was the first time I did it. It didn't even record. So I'm going to try again. But this is the last time I'm going to try. As you can probably see, the Kalima's arrived. So it's very windy. I'm hoping you can still hear me. I think you can. I'm close enough to the mic. And I hope I can read without blocking my face. Okay, I got a little bit of snivels as well today, I don't know why. Okay. Let's start. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to Aftcast Ten Reef Afternoons. I'm your host, Tim Dowd. It's Thursday the 25th of March, 2021. Yes, I did look in the calendar today. On today's show, we've got a little bit of weather. Well, quite a lot of weather, actually. And we're going to go over to Janet Hanscom. We're going to see the rest of the COVID. And we're going to look at the government website, if we can. So don't forget to like, subscribe, download the podcast. Wait till the end and find out how you can contact us, how you can go live on YouTube Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and join us. Enjoy the show. There's going to be plenty of weather in the next few days, so they say. And it's coming at me head on, direct from the Sahara with lots of dust and sand. The weather is 28 degrees in the shade, a lot warmer in the sun. It's blue skies, but hazy. And um, they're going to promise this for the next four or five days, I believe. So over the weekend, uh, they are saying that May come a bit of rain so dirty rain with it as well and even though it sounds idyllic 28 degrees it's very 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 windy I hope you can still hear me a lot of people think that this is good weather but it is really bad weather because it's bad for your asthma if you've got asthma a lot of dust in the air your car's covered your balcony's covered your windows need washing and you can't really dry anything outside without it being gritty, especially the towels. Well, that was your weather for today. COVID-19 updates. Now, I'm not ready with this because I didn't go into COVID straight away, but funnily enough, I remember it from the last three times I did it. So basically, we have 4,114 active cases. Uh, Tenerife has around about 2,147, and I think it's 1,047 in Santa Cruz, 510 in La Laguna. Uh, Arona has gone up to 110. We in Adeki at 103. Granadilla de Abona is around about 94 and the rest are under 50 so at the moment we are neck and neck with Ab Arona and Granadilla de Abona is not far behind in the south but it's uh, still leading with La Laguna and Santa Cruz up in the north there so that was your COVID for today Now let's go over to JanetAnscombe.com and see what she's got there. 
Well, of course, she's leading with Kalima arrives as forecast, bringing strong wind and dirty air. And it'll be worse over the weekend, she says. Update 25th of March. Oof, it's windy. Half the Sahara's on my floor. It's hot and cold simultaneously, and the air is filthy. The Kalima's only just starting really to blow in as forecast, and it's going to get worse over the next couple of days. Oh, joy, she says. The next one is Spain's borders only open to British nationals who are resident in the country or who have essential need to visit. And the third one is Los Cristianos Harbour. Breakwater reinforcement should be completed next week. So if you want to read that one, uh, the Los Cristianos Harbour Breakwater Reinforcement, uh, nip over to JanetAnscombe.com and I'll read this one from Spain's borders only open to British nationals who are resident in the country or who have essential need. So basically this story is about the uh, two different countries and two different entry rules. So... Uh, Janet has been inundated apparently with lots of people asking about way after the 30th of March we can all come on holiday and the FCDO has updated its travel advice for Spain following the announcement that the ban on arrivals direct from the UK will not be extended past 30th of March. Since the announcement came around the same time that the UK updated its own travel rules, it's important to note that whatever the UK allows, it has no power to grant anyone entry to another country. All it can do is legislate the reasons for which one can leave the UK. As third country nationals, British visitors may still not just turn up in Spain. However, many appointments, real or spurious, they've arranged with jesters, estate agents and banks, etc. to comply with the British rules because they are travel restrictions in place as far as Spain is concerned, particularly for the fortnight surrounding Easter. It's obvious necessary. Click, click. It's obviously necessary given the cues I'm receiving. Click, click. It's obviously necessary, given the queries I'm receiving, to explain that the UK and Spain are different nation-states. It's like having two doors, one out of the UK and a second door into Spain. The UK opening one doesn't mean that Spain automatically opens the other, because each is a separate country with its own independent powers. You'll have heard the word sovereignty. This is what it means. Whatever allowance the UK makes for leaving the country, Spain itself won't allow entry to just any purpose. The main points from today's FCDO statement is here, and she puts a link. And she's paraphrasing, Spain's borders are open to European Union and Schengen area countries. On the 22nd of December 2020, Spain introduced travel restrictions on passenger travel from the UK by air sea, with the exception of Spanish or Andorran nationals and those legally resident in Spain or Andorra. The Spanish government has confirmed that these measures will be in place until 6pm on the 30th of March. After 6pm on the 30th of March, while passengers travel from the UK to Spain will resume, Entry to Spain will only be granted to those passengers who can demonstrate that their journey is essential. For further information on the permitted reasons to enter Spain and necessary documents, see the list below of permitted reasons to enter Spain after the 30th of March. Travellers arriving from the United Kingdom are not required to self-isolate on arrival in Spain. However, from the 23rd of November 2020, there are some requirements for testing on arrival for those travelling by air and sea. Spot checks may be carried out on arrival to confirm that travellers have undergone a COVID-19 PCR TMA or lamp test and have tested negative. A minimum fine of €3,000 may be issued to anyone who does not comply. If you're travelling by air or sea to Spain, you must declare on the mandatory health control form listed below that you have undertaken the PCR TMA or lamp test within no more than 72 hours prior to arrival, have tested negative for COVID-19 and can show on request evidence of the certifying your results. And then she goes on to list the permitted reasons to enter Spain after the 30th of March. So from 6pm on the 30th of March... Passengers' travel between the UK and Spain will resume. However, entry restrictions and testing requirements will remain in force. 
only Spanish citizens who are legally resident in Spain or those who can demonstrate through documentary evidence an essential need to enter Spain will be allowed to enter the country. Permitted circumstances include holders of a long-stay visa issued by a member state or Schengen Association state who are traveling onto the said country, health professionals including health researchers and elderly care professionals who are going or returning from essential work, transport personnel, seafarers and aeronautical personnel, diplomatic, consular, international organizations, military, civil protection and members of humanitarian organizations, students who carry out their studies in the member states or Schengen Association states and who have the corresponding permit or visa and medical insurance provided that they are traveling to the country where they are studying and that entry occurs during the academic year or 15 days previous. Highly skilled essential workers whose work cannot be postponed or carried out remotely, including participants in higher level sports events due to take place in Spain. People traveling for imperative family reasons who can demonstrate an essential need to travel. All the circumstances above must be justified by documentary evidence. You should be aware that you may be questioned on arrival by Spanish border authorities to ensure you meet the entry requirements. Spanish border authorities will only grant entry if they are satisfied that your journey to Spain is essential and reserve the right to deny passage. So that's the good news and the bad news. Uh, the UK ban has been lifted, but the entry requirements have not changed. And the entry requirements are different for those within the EU Schengen zone. That's like Germany and the Netherlands uh, and outside that. So that means that we will be getting tourists in um, from within Europe. Uh, but from outside of Europe, the travel ban, uh, or not the travel ban, but the uh, the entry requirements are, are still stringent there. So that's uh, Janet Anscombe for today. I'd like to thank Janet for doing a great job and not losing her rag with the thousands of emails that she gets asking the same questions. So let's see if we can go over now to the government website. Well, the government website's back online. Okay, um, the health administration says that 253,260 doses of the, vac of the vaccine against COVID-19 uh, and 8,000 yesterday. It's been done 8,000 yesterday. Okay, let me just translate this into English and make it easy for me. Two seconds. That's number one. Number two. Okay, it didn't work, so I'm going to try again in Spanish. Uh, Canary obtains 56 accreditations for development of a new program of Erasmus. Uh, the Dependency Incorporation. Eh, de, de, de. Dependencia Incorpora en Semanas de las Dos Tercetas. I don't understand that. Uh, Sanidad registers 222 cases of COVID-19 in the last 24 hours. Constituida de Comisión Internacional del Centenario de Thomas Morales. Okay, I don't understand that either. Gobierno de Canarias me la aplicación de riesgos para detectivar intervenciones específicas. I don't understand that either. Basically, it's uh, the government of the Canaries is making better an application, a mobile application for red exos to detect the and intervene for species, exotic species. But uh, we'd have to read all about that. So my translator is not working. So nip over to gobierno.canarias.org and see if you can go and find out uh, what that means. Leave a comment underneath this video if you're watching on YouTube, if you've, if you've translated it. But uh, I couldn't do it on the fly. I apology. <laughs> Okie dokie. 
I'd like to thank each and every one of you for listening today, even though the wind was whistling through my hair. Don't forget you can watch on YouTube at youtube.com slash LWMST. We go live Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 5.55. If you want to join us online, go to timothydowd.com. That tells you where you can send us a message, learn how to sponsor the channel, and also how to join me live on screen Monday, Wednesday and Friday. We do have a Facebook page at LWMST and we post pictures to Instagram, mostly of food and me walking. And that's Living with MS Tenerife. We are on Twitter, but we don't we don't read it that much. We only post automatically to it. That's LWMS Tenerife. And thanks for listening. We'll see you in the next one. I love this song. It's called Small Town Bliss. Goodbye now. Well, if that didn't record... Oh, well, I'm talking to you anyway. But if that didn't record, then I apologise. But Google might think that you like to see this next. Or if you go and press the little button with our wedding photo, you'll learn how to sponsor the channel. And right next to it is a big round button that if you're not already subscribed, you can subscribe. Bye.